My name is Sri Krishna. This continues for the manufacturing process. Today topic is pattern allowance. So what is pattern allowance? The pattern is used to produce a casting of required dimension. It is dimensionally identical with the casting. So the pattern they have types of allowances, various types of allowances. So first one, shrinkage allowance, machining or finish allowance, draft or taper allowance, distortion or chamber allowance, wrapping or shape allowance. So we can discuss one by one. So first one is shrinkage allowance. Almost all casting metals shrink with cooling. The metal casting is made up of two types. First one is liquid shrinkage, solid shrinkage. In liquid shrinkage, we reduce the reduction in volume when the metal changes from liquid state to solid state at solidus temperature. The shrinkage raises with when the liquid metal to casting are pro provided in the mold. So second one, solid shrinkage. The reduction in volume caused when the metal loses temperature in solid state. The shrinkage elements is provided on the patterns. Next, machining allowance. The finish and accuracy achieved in sand casting are generally poor. And therefore, when the casting is functionally required to be a good surface finish or dimensionally accurate, the casting gets oxidized in the mold during the heat treatment. It requires to achieve extra cast dimension. To remove surface roughness and other improve casting from the imperfections from the castings. The surface finish is required on the casting. Next one, draft allowance. So it gives all the surfaces perpendicular to the parting line. So drafting elements is given so the pattern can be easily removed from the mold material, tightly packed around it without damping the molding cavity. So this is called draft elements. Next, distortion elements. Sometimes castings get distracted during solidification due to their typical shapes. So distracted is of irregular shape. All parts do not stick uniformly. Some parts shrink while others are restricted from the during. So it cannot distract it. Some different shapes, it is of U, R, V, T, L, etc. So, these types of shapes solidifies or distracted due to some typically. Next, wrapping or shake element. Before the withdrawal from the sand mold, the pattern is wrapped all around the vertical faces to enlarge the mold cavity slightly, which facilitates its removal. In enlarge the final casting made, it is desirable that the original pattern dimension should be reduced to account for its increase. 
So these are all the wrapping or shake conventions. Next, molding sand. Molding sand are mostly most commonly used for making all types of mold, irrespective of whether they are used for producing casting of ferrous and non-ferrous metals. In specially sand is used for making mold. The essential three in this molding sand are three essential constituents. So first one refractory sand, binder, and additives. Silica is widely used as a molding sand. It has 80 to 90 percent of silicon dioxide. So it gives refractiveness to the sand. So next types of sand. So what is the type? So types of sands are three types. So natural sand, synthetic sand, special sand. So in natural sand, we can available for the natural deposits. So it needed to only five to eight percent of water. So it is used for light casting in ferrous and non-ferrous metals. Regarding to the synthetic sand, it prepared with desired properties as we like artificially by mixing the clay free sand. It is used in mechanized production machine molding and high pressure molding. In special casting, we can use zircon sand, chromite sand. Next, types of molding sand. So in types of molding sand, so we can use green sand and so it has many types. So first of all, we can discuss in green sand. It is the most common molding it is the most common mold material. So it is a mixture of silica sand plus clay plus water. Silica sand is a major portion with a maximum percent. So by using the so water content is 5 to 8 percent and the clay is 16 to 30 percent. So it is having a good damping capacity for applying green sand so it can use small and medium size castings also so in regarding dry casting in dry casting mixture is prepared when separate binding material such as resins and then baked in oven baked bakery oven after the mold is made to get the required bonding strength. So it is in dry stage. So this is, this is also called as dry sand mold or skin dry mold. It is used for large casting. Next, facing sand. The facing of the mold and comes in contact with the molding matter, molten matter, when the mold is prepared, it is called facing sand. Next, loam sand. It consists of fine silica sand or fine refractories. Clay around 50%, graphite, fiber, and water is used in the loam sand. It's melting large casting, bell, roller, pulleys, etc. Baking sand. It is used to bake up the facing sand and fill the whole volume of the mold box. Old sand may use it rapidly, repeatedly. It is used baking sand is repeatedly used. Parting sand. This is clean clay free silica sand. 
used the parting surfaces of cope and drag next properties of molding sand porosity or permeability plasticity or flowability strength or corrosiveness refractiveness adhesiveness collapsibility so we can discuss one by one so first one is porosity or permeability it is the physical property of the molding sand mixture which allows the gases or water vapor to pass through it next plasticity or flowability the term flowability refers to the movement of the sand grain when they are subjected to molding forces strength or corrosion the ability of the sand particles to stick together when the sand it is in moist state next refractories it is the ability of the molding material to withstand high temperature of the molten metal adhesiveness the property of the sand due to which the sand particles tricks to the side of the molding box collapsibility the ability of the sand mixture to collapse under force next desirable mold sand properties and characteristics strength to maintain shape and resist erosion friction permeability to allow hot air and gases to pass through this sand thermal stability the cracking on contact with molten metal to rustic collapsibility the ability to give away and allow casting to shift without cracking the casting reusability can sand from broken mold be reused to make the molds another mold to reuse the make another molds next binders this are the materials added to base sand to get bonding strength so binder is used to material added for the base sand for increase in the bonding strength due to their sand mixture would take the shape and retain its under various pressure so organic resins pitch drying oil drying oil molasses etc inorganic fire clay bentonite etc high thermo chemical stability additiveness additiveness are added to molding sand to improve the properties like strength refractiveness and permeability to get surface finish of the casting to overcome the expansion defects etc sea coal fine bituminous coal powder solder pitch distilled from the soft coal cereals ground corn flour or corn starch silica flour very fine powdered silica special additives fuel oil extra molasses iron oxide next gates 
it is very important for the tropic gates the gate is a channel which connects runner with the mold cavity and through when molten metal flow to fill the mold cavity small gates is used for a casting which solidifies slowly and vice versa so the gates should not have sharp edges as they may break during pouring the sand pieces that may carry with the molten metal in the mold cavity so types of gates are top gate bottom gate parting line side gate so you can discuss one by one so what is the top gate so top gate is sometimes is also called as drop gate because the molten metal just drop on the sand in the bottom of the mold so generally the temperature gradients to enable directional directional solidification from the casting towards the gate which serves as the riser to bottom gate a bottom gate is made the drag portion of the mold in a bottom gate the liquid metal fills rapidly the bottom portion of the mold cavity and raises steadily and gently up the mold wells mold wall as comparison to top gate and bottom gate it involves little turbulence and sand erection erosion bottom gate produces good casting surfaces parting line so it is middle or side or parting gate system combines the characteristics of top gate and bottom gate system in this technique gate is provided along the parting line such as some portion of the mold cavity will be below the parting line some portion will be above the parting line the cavity below the parting line will be filled by assuming top gate or top gate the cavity above the parting line will be filled by assuming bottom gate so we can see the figure gating system pouring cup parting line riser gating gating system runner cob drag box flap so by pouring the molten metal by using pouring cup we are passing through the runner and go to the gating system when molten metal is pouring completed the riser will be coming from the top of the cob rock then it passing through the drop so finally core is completed by using the parting line so we can see the bottom of the figure so pattern is is given this is the core part so the line is uh, is parting line so finally casting of the diagram so it you can see the figure you can molten metal pouring to the pouring cup so runner will be shown this is a flask so parting line in the mid bottom of the line co box and drop box casting gates so what are the elements of casting 
So casting time elements. So first the pattern. Pattern is a replica of the final object to be made. The mold cavity is made with the help of pattern. So you can see the figure. This is the pattern. Top of the parting. So this middle line is parting line. So top is comb box and bottom is drop box. So parting line. This is dividing line between two mold plastic that makes up the mold. So next one, pouring basin. It is a small funnel shaped cavity at the top of the mold into the molten metal is poured. Pure, but the passes through which the molten metal from the pouring base reaches the mold cavity. In, in many causes, it controls the flow of the metal into the mold. So you can see the figure. So pouring cup, we can pour the metal, molten metal in to enter the bar. Then you can go to runner and next reaches to gates. Finally, casting will be completed. Next, the top is riser. So when casting is completed, when the pour, we can see the molten metal to riser. When the casting is completely filled by molten metal. So runner. So what is a runner? The horizontal portion of the gating system that connects the parts to the gates. The gate that control entrances from the runner into the mold cavity. So what is riser? A riser is also called as is also known as a feeder. It is a reservoir built into the metal casting mold to prevent cavities due to sinkage. Next core, a separate part of the mold made up of sand and generally baked, which is used to create opening and various shaped cavities in the cast. So next, chaplets. So chaplets are made to support the core inside the mold cavity to, to take care of its own weight and overcome the metallistic forces. So we can see the diagram also. So top part is core, bottom is so copan drag. Keep it so these two these two strips are tablets. So the white line is cavity, so this is the runner. So uh, middle of the line is parting line. So, uh, so this is mold. So vent. So vent is used to opening the mold to facilitate escape the air on gases, etc. So gating ratio. So the gating ratio refers to portion of the cross-sectional area between the spur runner in gates in generally denoted as spur area, runner area, the gate area. It depends on choke area. There can be two types of gating system, pressurized and non-pressurized gating system. So first of all, we can discuss the pressurized gating system. A pressurized gating system in gating area is smallest. Back pressure is there toward the system. Metal is more turbulent and cross formation. Gating system flows full. Right spur can be used. 
higher casting yield used for ferrous casting so next non pressurized gating system a non pressurized gating system have choke area at the bottom of this spur base total runner area in the gating gate area higher than this spur area in this system no pressure of the cast no pressure is exists in the metal flow system and does it help to reduce turbulence it is helpful for casting metals and alloys such as aluminium and magnesium the gating system should be designed to see all the parts flow full otherwise some elements of the gating system may flow partially allow for a aspiration next taper spaces runner in drag low casting yields so next advantages of casting can create complex spot geometries it can create both external and internal shapes some casting process are net shape other are near net shape it can provide it can produce very large parts some casting methods are suited to mass production next disadvantages of casting different disadvantages of different casting process limitations on mechanical property poor dimension accuracy and surface finish for some process example sand casting safely hazards to working due to hot molten metal environmental problem so these are all the advantages of the casting thank you